it's the Daily Kebab. Welcome, Muttonistas, to another version of the Daily Kebab. My Cockney Odyssey seems to be almost endless this time. It's a couple of days after the Arsenal game, which City lost 1-0 at the Emirates, and I'm on the Edgware Road in London. Why am I there, you ask? Well, those of you who know the area might know that this is one of the most famous streets in London for Middle Eastern food, shisha bars, perfume shops, fruit juice stores, you name it. Yes, it's London's own Middle Eastern enclave. And, as a bonus, because I don't think I brought you enough food on the Arsenal video, I'm going to have not one kebab, but two today. And something else I also like doing along the streets is just stopping for coffee or stopping to have a haircut or a shave. The Middle Eastern barbers are often amongst the best. Anyway, we're here to talk about football and kebabs, and that match against Arsenal, in my opinion, raised more questions than answers. And Matanistas, four questions that I often get asked, and sometimes I ask myself this. Firstly, did the summer departures weaken City too much and have they been adequately replaced? The next one, will the injury crisis have eased by the end of the international break? Will Rodri and Stones, for example, coming back, will that make a big difference? Is missing Kevin De Bruyne for half the season too big a miss? Don't forget, he is the guy who has tormented Arsenal on most of that 12-game winning streak we had against them. And finally, are Arsenal the real deal this season? Gary Neville predicts they're going to win the league. Is he right? Well, let's ponder over that one, because I'm getting hungry and we're going to have our first kebab. And in case you think I'm going to have massive plates full of meat, vegetables and chips, now I'm going for a couple of shawarma wraps, so nothing too big. Two is quite filling, but it's not ridiculous. And for those who don't know what a shawarma is, it's meat shaved off a cone-shaped spit, it's layered, and then filled in a wrap with pickles, chilli sauce, salad, that sort of thing. And I'm going to take you to two of the streets and possibly Britain's most famous spots for taking a shawarma. Et voilà, the first one, Café Helen, well known as a late night pit stop. They do open quite late and they don't open till about four to be honest. So they even have their own Wikipedia entry or they did when I last looked a few years ago. Anyway, let's give it a try because I've always enjoyed my kebabs here and our aperitif will be a chicken shawarma. So for a hell of a long time, I never knew which end to start, but I think it's the twisted end at the top. And one of the keys in terms of deciding where you go, which meat you have, it's how juicy it looks and how full the spit is. That looked absolutely salivating with juice and the lamb was pretty tempting as well, but we have to go to another place. Now, thankfully, the man behind the counter showed me how to do it properly. You grab the twisted end, untwist it, and then rip halfway down. I was making absolute cow's arse of that, and thankfully they stepped in. And I'm having water with this. I don't think this is licensed. Most places down here aren't. But I've been under the weather anyway for quite some time. I think about five or six days, so I'm happy to stick to the water. Anyway, on to the kebab. Really juicy meat, pickles, I think it's garlic mayonnaise and chilli sauce. The chilli sauce is obviously optional if you want it spicy. You can't go wrong with these to be honest and one bit I always look forward to at the bottom is all the meat juices and pickles that have collected in the bottom. Really scrummy ends of the kebab. Anyway, I'm not going to do this one handed, I'll be back with you when I've finished. And there we have it, Mutton Easter's the best bit, the juicy bits at the end. Well, there we are. A bit embarrassed that I didn't know the correct way to open those because I've literally had hundreds of those over the years. Anyway, that was a good shawarma. And for me, if there's a big rush of meaty juices at the end mixed in with that chilli sauce with a few scraps of meat and a pickle, then it's a good shawarma. And a word of warning, when you do get to the end of the kebab, make sure to lean forward because those juices can go everywhere. I'm one of the worst at spilling things over my shirt, but I survived this time. 
So, back to the football. Did City let too many players go in the summer? Well, I think so, yes. OK, I accept that we were never going to be able to keep a hold of so many defenders, so Laporte going, not a big loss given we have Gradiel, possibly an upgrade there. Cole Palmer, well, it'll remain to be seen how he performs at Chelsea. And you can't really stop a young lad if he wants first-team football. And, of course, Riyad Mahrez fluctuated between moments of brilliance and moments of absolute sloppiness. And I think Jeremy Doku might turn out to be the same or an upgrade on Mahrez. So not too worried there, except, again, it might take him a while to get bedded in. I do think that the huge miss, though, is Gundogan. I don't think Kovacic comes anywhere near close to replacing him and isn't even a like-for-like -like replacement, in my opinion. So that's where we're down a bit. As for the injuries, I think Rodri coming back will be enormous. But also Johnny Stones gives us much more control in the middle of the park, better passing, more forward passing. So I think we'll probably be all right after their back. Although, having said that, for any team, Kevin De Bruyne, what an enormous miss. There isn't anybody in the league, in my opinion, who comes close to his passing ability. So how can anybody say that he's not a big miss? It's a pity it seems he was rushed back. Anyway, Martinistas, before I give my prediction of how the season will play out and whether Arsenal are the real deal or not, time for the second kebab. So, Martinistas, the venue for the second kebab is the Ranoush Juice Restaurant, or Juice and Kebab Bar. They're owned by the Marouche Group, which are a very famous chain of Lebanese restaurants dotted all over London. I haven't seen one outside London, though, but they're worth a visit if you're here. And those restaurants do tend to be licensed. It's a warm day. I can sit outside. I'm going to go for the lamb. It looked reasonably juicy, which is good news, because once in a while, either the Renouche or Café Helen, one of their two skewers looks a bit tired because people haven't been ordering it. It's a bit like going for a pint of Guinness, in a way, because you need the kebab to be turning and serving and shaved off. And even though I'm probably here at the worst time of day for that, you still get a decent stream of customers. And what's more, easy to get a seat. OK, here we go again, folks. I'm going to try not to butcher the opening of this kebab this time. Something to note, though, this place does actually sell a lot of other types of kebabs other than the shawamas. Sheesh and kofta and all those sorts of things. I think that's the kebab aficionado's way of opening these wraps. Anyway, doesn't it look good? All that juicy lamb on the top. Oh, yeah. And the first mouthful was absolute heaven. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this, folks. The perfect amount of chilli sauce just to make it slightly spicy. But I'm going to eat this two-handed. I don't want that rush of juice, sauce and fat all over my shirt. I want it in my mouth. And I give you mutton Easters. I have to be careful not to spill any of these valuable juices. The money shots. The last couple of pieces of meat, the juices, the fat, the chilli sauce. That's the best bit of the shawarma for me. Maybe not everybody agrees with me, but I'm going to put the camera down because it's pretty messy stuff and I want to lean over the plate and finish this off. Oh wow, wasn't that good? And I freely admit you can't get kebabs or at least shawarmas like that in Manchester. One ingredient I left out, whereas in the chicken they added the garlic mayo, with lamb they had tahini sauce, which I think is made of crust sesame seeds and a couple of other ingredients, namely lemon juice and garlic. So, after those two juicy and delicious wraps, where does this leave City, though, when we come back after the international break? Well, I would say back in good stead. I know Kevin De Bruyne is usually our main man, but look at the lineup we could feel. Any four out of Johnny Stones, Kanji, Ake, Vardiol, Walker, and of course Ruben Diaz. So we're all right at the back. 
Johnny Stones, of course, important to the way we play because he fills in as a second defensive midfielder when we have the ball. Gives us the option of playing Rodri alongside either Rico Lewis, who's been performing well, or more likely Johnny Stones with an extra defender in. And funnily enough, one of the problems has been that we've not been quite as fluid up front. Haaland's dried up a bit, but that's got a lot to do with the marking that teams put on him and the space he then creates, but also the supply not being particularly good. Grealish hadn't been as good as he was at the end of last season. Phil Foden has looked good, not getting enough game time in my opinion, and the partnership of Alvarez playing just behind Haaland has been working. The problem has been the midfield and the wide players not being able to cause enough supply. I do trust Guardiola to get this right, even though we don't have much time on the training pitch to sort this out because most of City's players do play for their national teams. I'd also say that the Qatar World Cup is still having an effect, particularly on City. If you think of how much football was played last season, and then finishing with the Champions League final on the 10th of June, with not much of a pre-season and a restart for the Charity Shield at the beginning of August, I think that is nearly a month longer playing football or not being able to go on the beach or have your pre-season than most clubs in the Premier League. We have the World Club Championship coming up in Saudi Arabia. That's going to add extra congestion, although maybe going out of the AFL or Carabao Cup, rather, against Newcastle is a blessing in disguise. And finally, what about the Arsenal? Well, they hadn't beaten us for 12 games, so they're definitely three points better off than they were last season. But are they the real deal now? Are they going to bottle it again? Well, only time will tell. But what I would say is that some of the reaction on the social media is way over the top. People talking about a tactical masterclass. OK, yes, they did press and defend well without doing anything much up front. People talking about how they're going to win the league and everything. You know, calm down a bit. A deflected goal in nearly the last minute to win a game, to go along with similar to win the Charity Shield. Whilst reason for optimism is not a certainty, so calm down lads. Yes, they spent a lot of money in the close season. Is that going to make them better? Well, I think it's going to make them a little bit better, but is it going to make them better enough? I'm not so sure. One of those signings, Havertz, has done literally nothing since he came over, so it doesn't mean that spending 200 million is a passport to the league title. The two draws where they drop points this season, I saw enough sloppy play to make me wonder whether they are the real deal. I'm sure they'll be there or thereabouts, but I just don't see them quite having enough still. And I predict City will come good and win the league as long as A, the hangover from having won everything last year doesn't go on for too long. And, of course, we don't get too many fresh injuries. And if we're only a handful of points behind or in the lead by the time Kevin De Bruyne comes back in the new year or at the end of the year, then I think it's going to be City's fourth in a row. I'm going to leave you now, folks. And that was your Daily Kebab. <laughs>